Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Anupama, Professor at Department of Economics, Punjabi University, Patiala. I am here talking on behalf of Dr. Falendra Kumar Sudhan, Professor, Department of Economics, University of Jammu. I am going to talk about the module Youth and Climate Change from Demography of Climate Adaptation. So students, we are going to discuss about the dynamics of impacts of climate change on young population and their livelihood options as well as the assets. The poverty is inevitably associated with climate change vulnerability as well as the capacity to adapt to and mitigate the impact of emergencies and durable changes of living conditions. The poor people do not have adequate access to water, food, livelihoods, infrastructure, health, housing and services. The projected impacts of climate change are further disruption or decrease in access to such commodities which will have a proportionately heavier impact on the already stressed lives of poor people. The regions which are predicted to be severely impacted by climate change are generally inhabited by poorer people of the world. Thus, this module aims to understand the impact of climate change on young people in the context of urbanization, workforce, livelihoods, health, migration drought, desertification and the sea level rise. To suggest recommendations to improve the situation of the youth vis-a-vis -vis the climate impact. The vulnerability to climate change also has gender and age aspects. About two-thirds of the poor people around the world are women. Women also account for about 70% of the world's farmers. This means that the major share of the challenges in many rural areas is borne by the women. Young people between 10 and 24 years constitute over 1.5 billion people in the world, of which 70% live in developing countries. Therefore, Young people, especially young women, are particularly vulnerable to the projected impacts of climate change. At the climate change frontier, today's youth is standing. The current actions taken on the part of the governments, the private sector and the civil society will determine what future climate is bringing for them and how well prepared they are for what is to come. The large number of today's youth is growing up in those parts of the world which are likely to be hit hardest by climate change impacts. The strong need therefore arises to address their capacities in taking on the challenges that stand before youth. For this, there is a need to view holistically the lives and opportunities for young people urbanization, workforce and youth. Climate change and current global trend of urbanization are coinciding. In 2008, more people live in urban areas than rural, with many of these being young people. Urbanization is both a challenge and an opportunity for the youth. The urban areas emit high levels of greenhouse gases, but at the same time, provide, among other things, the possibilities for a more climate-friendly organization of waste management and transportation. The dualism can also be seen in case of young people in cities as they are more educated than their parents but face 
greater risks of ending up as slum dwellers compared to adults. Thus, for making young people to be able to exploit the environmental potential of cities, attention must be given to improvement of their livelihoods. In the coming decade, 1.2 billion young people are projected to enter the working age population. More than 40% of the world's unemployed are young people. The unemployment leads to poverty, which deprives people of opportunities to acquire necessary skills and means to prepare them for climate change effects and adapt to such effects. The capacity of young people to adapt to climate change will be increasingly weakened if their health concerns, including reproductive health concerns, are not adequately addressed. Now, let us discuss about youth, its livelihood opportunities, and health. The exposure to climate change effects, combined with the lack of opportunities and capabilities to adapt, increases the pressure on young people to migrate and leave their places and countries of origin. Young people should be made able to take decisions about family planning. They should have the tools to protect themselves from HIV and stay healthy. Besides housing, livelihoods and access to commodities such as safe water are to be provided so that they may be better prepared for meeting the impacts of climate change. The health concerns of young people, including reproductive health issues, should be properly addressed. In this way, unwanted pregnancies, sexually transmitted infections and HIV would be less of a challenge and hence less likely to interfere with young people's capacity to adapt to and mitigate the climate change. However, failure to address reproductive health concerns of young people will make the task more difficult. Let us examine the climate-induced migration and the youth. The migration has been used as an adaptation strategy to climate change in human history. The projected impacts of climate change will force many young people to migrate to different places. Some changes such as migration are sure to come about. It is to be seen how we react to them which will determine the outcome. In order to mitigate climate change effects, people should be encouraged to opt ways of living that emit less greenhouse gases. The human progress has been made in virtually all fronts. It should be ensured that successful inventions are available to more people, particularly young people. Moreover, these inventions should involve more young people so that they can carry the torch forward today and tomorrow. Young people are quite ambitious to take part in adapting to and mitigating the impacts of climate change. Such ambitions, however, must be met by opportunities to increase their capacities. Young people should not remain just the beneficiaries of adaptation and mitigation efforts. Rather, they should be given opportunity to play an active role in the formation and implementation of responses so that the responses remain sustainable. Drought It is predicted that due to climate change, regions of the world already experiencing droughts and heat waves are likely to experience more frequent extreme weather conditions in the future. On the basis of observations of recent events, it is also predicted that vulnerability to droughts in both developing and developed countries is likely to be higher than previously assumed. Many women assume farming responsibilities at an early age. 
there are ways to safeguard the availability of seeds and food while empowering women including young women the successful management of dry lands requires full and equal participation by both men and women agriculture is likely to suffer not only from smaller yields weaker soil lack of water and damage to crops but also suffer from the threats such as more frequent wildfires and increased death of livestock the cities will face problems such as water scarcity and water pollution which in turn brings other problems such as poor sanitation and shortage in water needed in industry and construction since urban areas are relatively hotter than nearby rural areas people inhabiting cities can expect a magnified extent of droughts and heat waves there is an increased risk of spreading of food and water borne diseases more frequent and stronger droughts and heat waves will result in both increased human and economic cost although drought events observed currently are not linked with climate change the analysis of their effects indicate significance of mitigating the effects of droughts for instance long droughts in west africa have led to the settlement of some nomad populations and radically transformed their centuries old way of living forced by long droughts people learned new methods of farming and caring for their cattle the initiatives to strengthen the capacities of former nomad populations are crucial and need to be sensitive to what the change might mean culturally desertification more frequent and stronger droughts and heat waves also have wide range of impacts on biodiversity and desertification the desertification is the degradation of land in arid semi arid and dry subhumid areas it occurs as a result of interplay of many factors first is the removal of forest and plants from land to be used as fuel or giving way to farming new construction and urban expansion another factor is the eroding of top soil through herding of cattle a third factor is the over exploitation of soil through farming all these factors point towards poverty which hinders the capacity to sustainably farm the land the developing countries comprise about 90% of world's dry land populations the process is enhanced by wind and water erosion which leave the land in a mix of sand and dust the drought and heat waves intensify the process at present as much as 40% of the total land is threatened by desertification the desertification leads to food shortage sand storms or disruption of water flows it also challenges the human security the desertification leads to crises such as famine political and civil unrest migration and war in regions it also has a gender dimension for instance agriculture in dry lands is heavily gender segregated traditionally women assume large responsibilities for gathering and preparing food therefore status of women and their livelihoods are at risk due to droughts and desertification the access to food is also threatened therefore social and economic status of women should be considered important in adapting to and mitigating the effects of drought and desertification the involvement of both men and women is important in programs that potentially change power dynamics if changes are to be accepted 
by the community as a whole and persevere. The forests. The global annual loss of forest area between 2000 and 2005 was over 7 million hectares or 0.18% of global forest area. Over 1 billion people around the globe are affected by deforestation. Major proportion of these affected people live in developing countries. The rainforests by producing oxygen and storing carbon helps in mitigating the impact of carbon emissions on climate change. But unfortunately, rainforests are also under threat from deforestation. In Amazonia, about half of the precipitation is generated by rainforest itself through evapotranspiration from trees. However, due to deforestation, precipitation is projected to reduce in Amazonia. The loss of precipitation risks is as high as 20%. This may lead to future dry periods higher surface temperatures and change in forest structure. In fact, deforestation is a causative factor to climate change and climate change in turn accelerates deforestation. There are many efforts to stop the immediate loss of forests as a result of deforestation. However, the long-term effects of climate change on forest areas are becoming increasingly harder to avoid. With the warming of global temperature, forested ecosystems are likely to be displaced as warmer temperatures will move climatic zones suitable for temperate and boreal plants. Evidence suggests that previously plant migration has taken place at a pace of 20 to 200 kilometers per century. But now, it is estimated that by the year 2100, the northward migration of climate zones suitable for temperate and boreal plants is likely to be as much as 200 to 1200 kilometers, meaning that plants risk lagging behind. No doubt, throughout the history of Earth, changes have occurred, but the speed at which these changes are occurring now has increased dramatically by global warming. It is projected that by the middle of the 21st century, increased temperature will reduce soil water in the eastern regions of Amazonia, which in turn will lead to tropical forest, bear, tropical forest being gradually transformed into savanna. Mitigating the effects of climate change on deforested area is a great challenge for developing countries. Poverty, along with institutional constraints in developing countries, hinders the path of mitigation to climate change. Lack of adequate resources to tackle the challenges is contributing to continuing spiral of negative effects that will be even harder to counteract. There is no mechanism for providing financial incentives for not clearing of forests. Indigenous peoples who inhabit rainforests all over the world are directly impacted by deforestation and climate change. These people, in addition to challenges in terms of effects such as extreme weather, threatening crops and traditional lands also face political pressure as their forests gradually become more politicized through efforts to curb deforestation and climate change. The United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People adopted in 2007 has widely recognized the rights of indigenous people. However, in spite of this, indigenous people are often ignored or systematically marginalized in decision making related to their homeland forests. The exclusion of indigenous people 
by the government institutions and programs as well as by the private sector leads to loss of traditional knowledge about forests in both short and long term deforestation adversely affects children and young people the deforestation and other unsustainable uses of forests raise the number of both present and future poor people this directly affects young people's choices for instance threats to school enrollment as the effects of climate change are projected to be most severe in future young indigenous people living in rainforests will have to manage the response to tomorrow's challenges to do this they must be enabled to be fully involved in work already being carried out thus the efforts to mitigate climate change and its effect on rainforests must contain strategies aiming at increasing education enrollment and improving the livelihoods of young people rising seas and choices all countries are projected to be affected in some way or other by climate change small island states are expected to suffer the most within the next century due to rising sea levels tropical storms and other climate change induced phenomena population inhabiting low lying areas and smaller islands might indeed find their homes unlivable while many small island states face increased risk from climate change they are still developing with small populations implying that their abilities to prevent mitigate and adapt to the projected climate change scenarios are severely hampered today rising sea levels has sprung up as one of the most frequently discussed climate change impacts which will partially or wholly cover small island states in the pacific rim in some countries planning to relocate large portions of population has already begun moreover in some cases those who move away choose not to return it is predicted that some islands will disappear before the year 2100 however this is not the only concern for young people living in small island states climate change is likely to enhance already existing challenges giving rise to grave situations before small islands become inhabitable due to rising sea levels it is not that all small islands will be covered in water but they will face new challenges therefore there is a strong need to find long term solutions to the potential problems for making small island states that are not projected to disappear under rising seas inhabitable in the future today all small island states across the world share a common problem related to water supplies and access to fresh water in general access to water is scarce and managing the limited supply of water is part of their daily life it is projected that climate change will further compromise the available water resources rising sea levels and changes in rainfall will contaminate fresh water reserves with salt salinization also taint soil used to grow crops for instance in micronesia taro a staple food is grown in low lying swamp areas this area is vulnerable to flooding by sea water containing dissolved salts this taint soil with salt water it takes up to 2 years in cleaning the soil with normal rainfall the taro plant itself needs another 2 to 3 years to be ready to harvest salt water intrusion through wave surges rising sea levels and precipitation if occurs more frequently the soil will have more difficulties recovering 
the resulting loss of crops is major threat to economies of small island states, many of which already depend heavily on food imports. Many small islands are in tropical or subtropical zones. The diseases such as malaria, dengue, and diarrhea are therefore a pressing concern for some small island states. It is not certain if, how, and where climate change will lead increased incidence of diseases in future. But this is an area of great concern. If temperatures rise, access to fresh water is compromised and wet seasons change. In addition, poor waste management and lack of infrastructure also contribute to the spread of disease. Climate change is projected to affect biological diversity of small islands in higher latitudes. Climate change is expected to force young people living in small island states to make difficult decisions. They will have to decide whether to stay or to leave to settle somewhere else. Climate change is likely to have significant impacts on the lives of young people living on small islands. It is projected to have negative effects on their livelihoods as well as their physical and psychological health. In order to enable young people living on small island states to take important decisions regarding their future lives, it is important to ensure that they may have unhindered access to education, livelihoods and health services. What is likely to happen to millions of young people within the coming decades if the impact of climate change is not restrained and if the roots of climate change are not addressed. Young people living in poverty are expected to hit hardest by climate change. Since young people are standing at the frontier of climate change, it is the level of attention that we give to their needs that determines how their lives will evolve. Today, young people all around the globe are participating in climate change. Young people have to shoulder the challenges of climate change. There is a great need to support and strengthen them in their endeavor to protect the richness and diversity of the earth for themselves and for coming generations. Most vulnerable populations live in developing countries. Efforts to equip young people with tools to adapt to mitigate the effects of climate change should consider poverty perspectives as well. In order to reduce vulnerability of young people to climate change, bringing poverty reduction and health improvements is necessary. To enable today's young generations to face the challenges, education, employment opportunities, access to health services, including reproductive health and freedom from harm are all the prerequisites. So students, let us sum up what we have learned from this module. To sum up, we can say that the youth should be enabled to take advantage of the progress made in the direction of more climate-friendly ways of life, supported by the advancement of technology. The people have to be ready for the future. Since increasing amount of the global population is concentrated in urban areas, the preparation for future becomes particularly important for young people. While reducing poverty is important, growth and the creation of wealth must occur in new ways. It should be ensured that development does not come at a cost of ever-increasing greenhouse gas emissions. Moreover, developed countries should not remain at the same emission levels as today. If unsustainable patterns of production 
and consumption creating same or higher emissions continue we may risk crossing the tipping point of the natural and human mitigation capacities however other ways of living also exist and where they exist they work young people therefore must be made able to take advantage of the progress that has been made in the direction of more climate friendly ways of life supported by the advancement of technology the governments policy makers researchers donors and international organizations have to recognize the importance of giving a crucial role to young people in adaptation to and mitigation of climate change it is a young population who will implement what is decided today and live with the consequences the government and policy makers should promote their involvement on all levels of discussions related to adaptation and mitigation how climate change affect young people and what are the best responses are the important questions to answer the donors have to identify that larger young populations than ever before live in the world and take appropriate steps to utilize their potential as agents for change at all levels of climate change policies and programs empowerment of young people should be strongly advocated by international organizations young people should establish networks and address the challenge of climate change if the suggested support is provided to the young people they will themselves be prepared to play their role and engage in the response to climate change today and tomorrow young people's commitment to the demanding task of climate change should be strengthened that's all with today's lecture i hope you must have enjoyed it thank you